All right. Super exciting. So this is the behind the scenes. <laughs> super exciting behind the scenes stuff <laughs> let's go here hit that hit that <clears throat> hmm and this is why we're still in beta it is actually <laughs> every, every time we get comfortable with what we're doing it, it goes back to beta <laughs> it certainly certainly does <clears throat> all right we are live honey and the channel showed up look at that it's like it's all working it's all coming together something's bound to fail yeah Something is bound to I'm, fail. I'm getting some uh some static from your audio oh yeah i'm getting crazy static over here yeah would be great. All right, let's do it. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 53 for Friday, the 16th of October, 2015. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, and that guy right there, who you might actually be able to see at the same time as me today, is Kent. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm stressed. It's just stressed. <laughs> like, an insane week of nothing but stress, and now here I am, intentionally stressing myself out. Like, Well, yeah, I mean, you gotta have a hobby, and your hobby is stress. Uh, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> apparently that's the thing. That's got to be a thing, right? It is so. now, if it wasn't before. <laughs> well, uh, so how you been this week, man? Um, good, I guess. Kind of bored. Cause I, well, you know, last week I started work, but I'm not really working yet still. Yeah. So I go to work, and then eight hours later I come home. Oh, so it's just like before you retired. Well, kind of, but I don't even have anything that I can pretend to be doing now. So, <laughs> so, uh, so you you rekindled your relationship with Facebook because that's all there is um, to do at work when there's nothing to do at work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been reading a lot of news. Oh. That's, that's what I've been. That's kind of what's been occupying my time. Well, you would think that the show notes would be more full on your side if you're reading a bunch of news. Yeah, well, at work I can't I can't get on Google Drive. Oh, so and you... I'm in a building with with classified facilities, so they have the shielding that blocks. Oh, believe me, I know reception. I know all about so, that crap this week. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've been kind of crippled when yeah. it comes to uh, doing internet things. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I, I did get a chance to watch a movie this week. H have you seen the new the new disaster movie, San Andreas, starring The Rock? Um, I have not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sing its praises. It's not a great movie, but it's it's a disaster movie. And if you like disaster movies, it's you know fits the bill. Um, one thing that I one good thing that I can say about it. Is that you know how a lot of disaster movies, like whether you're talking about uh, 2012 or The Day After Tomorrow or something like that, you've got like an hour plus of setup and, oh, hey, care about these characters. Oh, now care about these characters. Now care about this third set of characters. Oh. And then finally, eventually something happens. No, 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 not this movie. It was like, all right, here's a couple characters. There's a couple over there. Anyway, all right, shit's hitting the fan now. Five minutes in the movie. That was hey, uh, so uh, so audio just took a crap. Yeah, yeah. It audio... actually improved for me. <laughs> <laughs> now the chat room is telling me that. Uh, oh no! Now apparently now it's good. 
It sounds great now. <laughs> and yeah, it sounds like crap for me. This is going to be great. This is going to be an amazing episode. Oh, man. Can you at least hear what I'm saying? Uh, yes, for now. Okay. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> and as you so famously like to point out, this is why we're still in beta, right? This is why we're still in beta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so San Andreas, man, it just goes right into the action? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, I mean, for what it is, if you like disaster movies, it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah. Well, there yeah, we go. What did you do this week? Um, I worked. I worked, and then I worked some more. Mm. So, um, I did, uh, you know, I told you last week that I was having problems with my iPad. I did finally fix that. That took uh, quite a while to do. Um, what was the issue? I have no idea. I, <laughs> I, That's always good. I got pissed off. I dropped it on the ground. I left it there for two days and then came back to it, plugged it in, and it started working. So okay, yeah, I had to do a complete restore, but I, maybe maybe <laughs> maybe it was just me like ignoring it and saying "screw you," I'm getting out of here. And you've got like a, it's an older one, right? Like a second or third gen? It's a third gen. It's the first gen that had the i the uh, Retina screen. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. 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 It's like the only thing in the world I'm actually caught caught up with uh, as far as Tom Merritt goes. Him and I have the same iPad. Um, <laughs> and we refused to upgrade for the same reasons because this one's working pretty good so far until I had to drop kick it this week, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> that, that tends to be when, when I finally go about upgrading is when my shit doesn't work anymore. Oh, well, I'm, I, yeah, no. I'm like, screw it. If, if I can drop kick it once a week and it still works, I'm good. <laughs> oh yeah 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 totally totally the, the drop fix is in full effect over here yep uh yeah <clears throat> so uh so i'm like completely distracted by our new setup i can't go on without a- expressing that we're on a new setup today we're not just doing google hangouts we're actually streaming to diamondclub.tv yeah, which is pretty rad. Yeah, it'd be great if uh, if I could figure out what the hell's wrong with my audio now that everybody else can hear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have to. It's gonna take some tweaking. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. Uh, Sergeant Muffin, he's in the chat room right now. He uh, hooked me up, uh, gave me basically a, a go here and figure stuff out tutorial, which means he <laughs> told me exactly what I needed to do to get it going. And uh, right. pretty awesome. Uh, many thanks to him. Um, but yep. uh, we are here today uh, to talk about one specific thing, and we'll get to that right after this. Now, in all my woes this week, I did not take the opportunity to listen to a TED Talk, but you did. I did. Um, <laughs> normally, I you know I sing the praises of the TED talks that I watch because nor- typically, if I watch one and I didn't care for it, I'll watch another. And if I didn't care for that one, I'll basically I'll just keep watching them until I find one that I, that I want to talk about. Fair enough. Yeah, it, it didn't work out for me this week. <laughs> I watched a couple of them. Um, didn't really care for those. I tried again today. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to talk about this one. I'm going to give a non rec for probably the first time in show history. Uh, no, we've uh, actually, we've had one before. I don't remember whose it was, but I think, yeah, yeah. I think it was yours though. It, probably, probably. We talked about one. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little less forgiving and more blunt than you are. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so tell, hey, me about, our, tell me about Alan Al- Adams, the discovery that could rewrite physics. Like, the title right. has me excited. I'm good. I, the title is drawing me in. I'm ready. Exactly. And as was I. <laughs> so I watched it. And it's, and it's not the topic. The topic was fascinating. But he didn't really say shit about it. So basically, he's talking about <laughs> the, the edges of the universe and the, the little, the, the, I guess, the echo of the Big Bang okay. that you can see on the edge of the universe. All right. And it's so fascinating that you can see like this bubble that we're in and it, and it kind of explains the, the inflation theory of the universe and how it's expanding and, 
and all this. And the only interesting thing that he really touched on was the idea that we're in this bubble universe and there's the possibility that there are other bubble universes. That's that that's not really news, kind of is it? Existing with right, and then the TED talk ended. <laughs> so, like, so was it a matter wow. of, of he ran out of time? Like, was it an eighteen? No, it's only four minutes and forty two yeah, seconds long. It's only like five minutes long. <laughs> it was all foreplay. <laughs> That's just like I got my, really excited about this talk. That's just like but my first all, marriage. <laughs> this was this was a blue balls of a of a TED talk. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so don't don't watch this one. We'll 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 I will avoid it. I will avoid it. Um, <laughs> and and it's, unless I'm just in that mood to be played with and let go, you know. That's you know, <laughs> so, sometimes you're in that mood. Sometimes you just want to be fondled a little bit and let go before it all gets uh, gets uh, gets exciting. Um, yeah, it's it's not as messy that way. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, <laughs> all right. So our big topic for the day, man, the thing that we've been waiting to talk about for, I don't know, several, uh, oh, well, like 30 <laughs> years. Um, and my audio just changed again. This is amazing. This, like, Did it improve at least? No, it's completely trash now. The static went away, but now it's cutting out every two seconds. So anyway, we're going to talk about Back to the Future 2. <laughs> yeah. So next <laughs> next Wednesday is October 21st, 2015, which is the date that Marty and Doc and Jennifer went to in Back to the Future 2. Can you hear me, Amos? I guess that, not. Huh? So my partner Amos is having a ton of audio difficulties. So hopefully his audio will kick back in so he can rejoin the conversation. And he's laughing hysterically. So I'm wondering if he can hear me and he's just not transmitting anymore. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So everybody's seen Back to the Future 2. One of the coolest things about that movie is that there are many predictions about what the future is going to look like. Well, guess what, folks? We're here. We are living in the future. Next week is October 21st, 2015, or 2015, as they say in the movie. And we want to talk about some of the things that have come to be, some things that haven't come to be, some things that kind of, sort of, maybe are almost there. And hopefully we'll get Amos in here so that we can have an actual conversation about these things. And it doesn't look like it's happening. So I guess this is going to be a one mic show for a little while. Just, just so you know, man, I, it is. I, if you can hear me, this is amazing watching you lip sync your way through our show notes. Ah, oh, see, that's awful because I can hear you now. Oh, yeah, are you is, hearing me? This, this is the best episode ever. So here you go. We got <laughs> we got things for, we got things for uh, Back to the Future Two broken down three ways. Okay, we, well four ways actually. We got things that uh, uh, we that the show got about ninety percent right. Things that it kind of might have got it right a little bit, maybe kind of, and things that it missed completely. And then we also have a, a, a little breakdown for a couple things that it just didn't even talk about that it you know any real vision of the future would have shared so i think we can work our way through some of the audio problems if uh, i'll take one and then you'll take one we'll just keep going like that and and hopefully we don't repeat each other too much because this is a uh, it's it's beta it's fun times so um one thing that it got right is wearable tech uh several times in in the movie it shows people with different different accessories that are obviously technology based uh, specifically the, the the goggles or glasses that they wear at the dinner table while they're watching TV. Um, I thought that was uh, that was kind of dead on. I mean, if you go straight from that to uh, uh, Microsoft's uh, HoloLens, you're kind of seeing that. Um, so I, I gave that a 90%. Uh, I thought that was pretty close. Yeah. Um, not only that, I mean, it's kind of reminiscent of Google Glass or even... Uh, some of the things like um, 
the new VR systems that are going to be coming out in the near future. Uh, granted, we don't have those things in hand yet, um, but they do sort of exist. Uh, but video calls, that's, that's something that we more or less have that I, I think that we actually surpassed. So we have things like Skype, Google Hangouts, uh, FaceTime on on um, the iPhones and Apple products, uh, so that that I think is is really good. The thing that they missed though in the movie is that everything was still stationary. You had to go to a wall or to uh, an object, a fixed object, to do a video call. But we've got it better because we could actually walk around town and and do uh, like FaceTime or, or things like that. All right. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you spoke about FaceTime and things like that. And yeah, that's, that's one of the things that's just amazing. Uh, there was one line in the movie where he's in the diner and he goes to play a game. And they can't, these kids can't figure out how to play the game because they have to pick up the gun and actually use their hands to play the game instead of just however they planned on, on <laughs> massaging it. Um, yeah, we've that that's that's pretty close to what my uh, uh, PlayStation the play the little wand thing and and uh, uh, the Xbox Connect. You know that's uh, that's right along in there. So I went ahead and gave that a gave that a win as well. Um, and I've forgotten all about that scene until I was reviewing this earlier today. And I thought <laughs> I, that was like, yeah, that's so typical of shitty American kids. I was one, and there's the whole new batch. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's actually one of me and the boys' favorite scenes. Uh, it's got Elijah Elijah Wood as a little kid in that scene, and we always talk about that and make fun of it. Uh, yeah, so tablet computers. Yeah, like spot on, man. That That's an iPad. They're using iPads. Um, that's, you know, we've had those for a couple years now, and it's pretty much right on. Doc Brown actually almost has an iPad. In the movie, I mean, it, it, like if you look at the side view, it almost looks just like an iPad. So, um, right. So, all right. So you can you can hear me now, I guess. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that he, that's in there is augmented reality. Yeah. There's a couple times when they he shows videos or you know a screenshot of somebody, and it's actually like looking and seeing who's who and what's going on, and everything else. And I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, the closest thing that I've actually got usage on this for myself. Um, is around me the app? I love that app. I go to a new town, you open up around me, find out you know, just look at restaurants, tip it sideways, and just start scanning around. And I can just it shows me how far away all the restaurants are, how far the bars are. Um, to, it didn't it didn't have titty clubs as a uh, category, but if it did, I mean, you know, that'd probably get a lot of use from some people as well. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so there's that. Siri is actually pretty good at, at finding uh, things like that, brothels and strip clubs and, and things like that. So, I mean, it's it's not far off. You right, so think the strip of clubs would come, they would come out with that app themselves. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so so you one of the things you put in here is hundreds of drinks from a single dispenser. Uh, yeah, that's something that we've kind of been able to do for a while now. You go to uh, Taco Bell now. And you can choose like, okay, I want um, Mountain Dew, and it'll it'll put it in there. You can tell it how much ice you want. You can whatever. It all comes from the same same dispenser. So that's you know that's a pretty easy one. We've we've had that for a bit. Yeah, um, the first time I ever saw anything like that was at Five Guys, and you could choose you know different drinks and what flavors you want added to the drink and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty pretty awesome. So that's the only time I've ever really seen it, but it's there. I mean, it doesn't pop up out of the table, but it's there. Um, hmm. right. Some of the other things on here, actually, unless there's anything in particular that you want to hit, I think some of it's pretty boring. Um, didn't really require its own little statements, flat screen TVs, uh, yeah. picture in yeah. picture TV. Uh, the only one in here that's really interesting to the rest of this column is the eighties nostalgia. The fact that we're still nostalgic about the eighties. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. One other thing in the list that I didn't want to touch on though is Pepsi. Perfect. Pepsi is actually coming out with Pe the Pepsi Perfect from the movie next Wednesday on Back to the Future Day. So that's yeah, kind of well, neat. What, what are the odds you're actually going to see one of these? Because they're only making like 6,500. 
and right, they're, yeah. they're, they're going to be gone as soon as they're available, if they're, if they're not already gone, but whatever. Yeah, and they're selling them at, for $20.15 a piece. <laughs> so how many people do you think are going to actually open that thing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What if it's not even Pepsi? What if it's just, uh, you know, just like dark colored water, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, they said it's going to be Pepsi, like their, their real sugar Pepsi. Uh Anyway, so, uh, yeah, right, so, anyway. so, so on with the tech, um, hoverboards, we put this as the, uh, the close soon kind of, because we kind of have hoverboards, not to the yeah. extent where they're going to float over water in the pond in the middle of the town square, but we have the, the concept is there and the, the, it, it's functioning at least somewhat appropriately, but so yeah, it's, there's it's a kinda. couple different kinds too. There's the, um, the nitrogen, the liquid nitrogen cooled one. Um, there's the the electromagnetic, uh, you know, go over copper one. There's a couple of them out there, but none of them really work that well, and they're not going to work over normal surfaces. So, you know, that one's still maybe, maybe we'll get there, but probably not like the one that Marty rode. Not not anytime soon. <sighs> So the uh, the self tying shoes is another one. Uh, Nike is actually coming out with these shoes sometime this year. Yep. And apparently they're going to be just like the ones in the movie because I, I saw somewhere online I saw the actual patent drawings for these things, and it's going to have little motors in there to to pull the laces together and all that. Looks pretty neat. I mean, it's going to be just a you know gimmicky whatever it's probably not going to be very functional See, or even comfortable but it'd be kind of neat to have a pair i think this is one of those things that i knew nothing about until i saw the article you know well one of the many articles i was looking at today um <clears throat> so self-tying shoes is that what's finally going to fix these freaking kids that can't tie their shoes or just don't want to i mean because i see them walking around now and i'd say anybody that's 10 years or more younger than i am they're walking around without their damn shoes tied anyway so nike's <laughs> going to come out with ones that tie their shoes for them is are they finally going to have tied shoes or are they going to figure out a way to not tie those as well <laughs> like you buy the shoes <laughs> sure and you remove will. the battery or something i mean <laughs> most of the shoes that i wear are are slip on anyway or at least I'll, I'll tie them but they'll be loose enough that i can slip them on i mean who ties their shoes all the time yeah i don't I, I, so, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, to me, it's kind of an outdated mechanism. <laughs> All right. Um, 3D movies. We got this in the close soon kind of category because, well, it's a thing. Like, it's definitely a thing. I, sharks aren't coming out of the signs on the theater to chomp you in the middle of the street. But theaters, at least, think 3D is the shit. Yeah, well, the the thing about the movie that makes it different is nobody was wearing 3D glasses. This was just a perpetual there 3D thing. So they, they had to be using some sort of like holographic projection or something that did not require the, the use of glasses. And that's something that we just don't have yet. But we have a 3D-ish thing going on right now. So uh, drones. Drones is something that that we see a lot of today. Uh, personal drones. We've you know the the military has been using drones for for decades now. Uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent in the in the news in the last few years. But uh, personal tech, personal drones that you can just buy out of the store, right out of the box, and just fly them around. That's becoming a, a thing, and businesses are starting to use them for all sorts of things. Um, Fire departments are using them. Law enforcement's using them. Everybody's using them, and they're just going to become more and more of a thing. So that's yeah, that's pretty much uh, mm. pretty much there. That probably should have been in the ninety percent column. See, actually, this is one of those things that uh, the they okay. So there's drones, and there's drones in the movie, but the implementations are just completely different. So, yeah, 
you know um, for now for now yeah yeah all right um so uh this here's a big one and it's it's been gaining a lot of traction here lately uh the cubs <laughs> Now the we Chicago already know the, we already know the philosophy or the uh, the 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 fortune telling is not going to come true simply because they can't win the conference series and the world series in the next 5 days. It can't happen. Right, right. But this being the year maybe they they might be able to win the world series yeah. this year. They have already advanced to the National League Championship Series, which starts tomorrow, actually. Um, maybe. <laughs> it could happen, yeah. man. This could be their year. Yeah, if it's going to happen, not, this it's could It's not going to be, be against year. the Florida Gators or whatever, whatever team they, they beat in the movie because that team doesn't exist. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm really cheering for the Cubs. I, I've I've kind of been a lifelong Cubs fan anyway. Uh, I haven't really followed baseball lately, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm rooting for the Cubs. I, I kind of always have, but this is uh, this is the year they need to they need to do it this year. Let's <laughs> uh, see another thing that we've got in the category of close kinda or soon is biometric security. One of the cool things in Back to the Future 2 is when they go up to their, their house, they just got to put their thumb on the on the door frame there and they, they can get into their house. We absolutely have that tech now. Our iPhones have thumbprint readers. Uh, a lot of uh, work centers will have a biometric thumb scanner or some other biometric thing set up to allow access. That's absolutely a thing. Does everybody have it on their on the door of their house? No, uh, but I'm sure some people do. Yeah. Um, so here's a here's a quick rundown of things that they missed. Uh, just flat out, <laughs> there's there's not even a consideration. Flying cars, <laughs> not there. We are so not there. As I don't even know if I ever want to be there, but we are not yeah. there. <laughs> right. Now there was a touch of the autonomy in there as well, but. It's, it's still it wasn't even close enough to call it a, 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 a anywhere near what actually happened. So, um, <laughs> self adjusting clothing other than the shoes, which like I said, they're probably just going to find a way to take the batteries out and not use anyway. The self adjusting clothes, <laughs> not there, not there at all. Um, nope. Fax machines, like it, like oh my gosh, uh, my favorite joke as far as this goes is the one that says, uh, "Yeah, we can't fax where I live." And the person's like, where do you live? And he's like, uh, the 21st century. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, fax um, machines is one of those things that I can fucking rant on because the only people that really use fax machines are doctors, lawyers, lawyers and banks. Yeah. Nobody else. Ugh. Don't get me started yeah. on fax machines. <laughs> You're getting yourself started here. Um, <laughs> it's a but it's food, a hot button topic for me. Food prep. Fuck we we do not have uh food rehydrators. As much fun as that doesn't sound, because that does not sound delicious at all. Uh we do not have food hydrators. Um Mr. Fusion, we do not we cannot produce electricity from random scraps of food. I mean that'd be amazing that would if be we could. Badass. <laughs> I mean, the best we can do is uh, the gas we produce from Taco Bell. Um, floating signs kind of goes long right along with the drones. They had them there. Uh, we we don't have that. We don't have. We don't. I don't. We don't want this. We do not want floating <laughs> signs. There's enough crap in our view anyway. And uh, luckily, we never got to Jaws 19. That never happened. <laughs> we only got the four. And thankfully, <laughs> thankfully that never happened. But um, hey, now we have Sharknado. <laughs> That's good, right? <laughs> um, so, so I'll let you cover the the couple of things they didn't mention, because um, there's a, there's two of them that are kind of related, but yeah. All right. So when they went when they went to the diner in the movie, there were people riding these these exercise bikes while they were eating their food. That didn't happen, thankfully. How awful would that be? Riding, riding an exercise bike while you're trying to eat? Or what might even be worse is the guy next to you riding an exercise bike 
while you're trying to eat and you got to deal with the his smelly sweaty body <laughs> and possibly get sprayed with sweat like that's just that is awful i'm so glad that that did not come to pass <laughs> fashion that's the other thing oh my god if you watch this movie today those clothes were supposed to be futuristic but oh my god they look 80s as fuck they look like like eighties club clothes, something you, that you would see on MTV. I'm glad that that's not what we're wearing today. Uh, yeah, enough said about that. What say mm. you, Amos? Ah, <laughs> uh, so many things. So there's so much wrong with that movie. So many things. <laughs> um, so uh. One other thing I want to talk about, and this has nothing to do with Back to the Future 2, although it's something they might have been able to foretell in there, but we've all seen it for you know coming for quite a while. Playboy is dropping nudity. They're eliminating the fully nude women from the magazine. Um, and and, and it's, it's, it's easy to see why, because there's not that gap anymore. It's not trend-setting to have pictures of naked chicks in your magazine. When Pornhub is completely free, so yep. Um, we, I mean, this is something we've seen, we've all seen coming. I think for a while, and it it really, in my mind, it kind of takes the argument that oh, we do it for the artistry of it right out the window, because if you're doing it for the artistry of it, you'd still be doing it. Um, the age old argument of well, Playboy is about the naked chicks. Now we're about to see how well they do with just the articles. <laughs> Yeah, well, one thing about this is kind of worrisome to me. Uh, Playboy was kind of the the introduction. I guess you could call it the gateway drug of porn. You would get a hold of your dad's magazine stash, his Playboys, or you know your uncle or your friend's dad or who whoever, wherever. We always back in our day, we always were able to find a magazine here or there, and that was kind of my introduction anyway to the naked female form and my therefore my introduction to porn and it's kind of a an innocent way i guess to see porn for the first time so the thing that worries me is if that this is gone what is what is going to be the first intro it's going to be some hardcore shit that you're going to find on on pornhub or something and that can be shocking to a 12, 13, 14-year-old boy, whatever age they, they discover porn. And there's really no intro. It's just going to be jumped right into some scary shit. And I wish Amos could hear me so that, so that we could converse about this. <laughs> you, you keep leaving me these hanging turnovers, and uh, yeah, I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> um, I know. So, uh, oh, so I'm going to assume you made a really good point on that. Congratulations. All right. Good, good follow up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as, we, uh, as we close out this amazing episode, um, <laughs> I wanted to show out, th- throw another shout out to uh, uh, Sergeant Muffin out there, uh, patreon.com forward slash Sergeant, Mu- Mu- yeah. uh, Sergeant Muffin for, uh, for hooking us up and for hooking up all of Diamond Club, really. And making things happen. Uh, great individual yeah. over there. Just the, the the chats that I've had with him between between being exceptionally tired and uh, <laughs> exceptionally helpful. Quite the individual. Um, so uh, <laughs> cruise on over to Patreon dot com slash Sergeant Muffin and give a helping hand to all of Diamond Club. So Kent, I will let yes. you tell people where you can be found and uh, any closing remarks you have before I go through the ending spiel. Uh, hoping that I don't screw it up too bad this week. <laughs> right on. All right, you can follow all my exploits on Twitter, at RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, come check me out on there. If you're a beer guy like me, you can go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche, and you can see all the, the beers that I've been rating and uh, see what's going on there. And I just wanted to echo what Amos said. Thank you to Sergeant Muffin. This is a really great opportunity for us to be on Diamond Club TV. Thank you. All right. You yeah, see, there we go. There's, this is a visual transition I can pick up on. All right. <laughs> um, 
I'm Amos, uh, Ethan Kane on Twitter. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Uh, submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. And, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback on our website, ritualmisery.com. I can't stress enough the best way to give us any kind of support at all is to give us feedback, let us know what you think of the show, and maybe drop us a, a rating or a share or two, and that'd be great. Um, so hopefully all can hear this. Uh, thank you so much to Mr. Kevin McLeod. That's another shout-out we should give out uh, for allowing us to use his music on Incomptech.com. Um, thank you for listening and or watching and or stumbling through like, <laughs> like I have today. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That was amazingly fun. Um, uh, <laughs> trying to see you uh, uh, read your lips and catch up on the other every other uh, 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 word or, or, or syllable that I was catching there. So, uh, oh, man. an extra special thanks. Hopefully, it recorded okay, and hopefully, it all went out there all, all right. And uh, I'm, I'm hearing that uh, uh, from the chat room that they could they could hear both sides just fine. So apparently, it's just me. <laughs> So all, all the harassment I gave you earlier, Kent, about it just being you. Well, this time it must have just been me. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That being said, we're going to go ahead and shut down. So thank you to everybody and have a, have a good night. <laughs> all right. See you guys. <laughs>